And it's Monday, so I'm back to do just that. So now, if you are joining my channel from wherever you are, please let me know while I crack open ah, a nice ice cold Canada dry. Ah, delicious. Now, with that being said, please uh, let me know if you can hear me. Check one, check one, breaker, breaker, one, nine. And also, uh, chat for me. Somebody chat for me. Chat back. I see the chat over there. I don't see the chat right here, though. Where is it at? All right, I see some of it popping up. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay, now I see the chat. Uh, YouTube probably like, darn it. <sighs> we, we can't hold him down for too long. So, yeah, thanks for uh, letting me know you're there. If you can hear me and you can see me, let's go ahead and get started because uh, it's Monday and we got a few things to talk about. Uh, somebody say, hey, what's up, Chrissy? All right, now, let's get it. Let me get loose. Oh, don't forget. 330-974-4607. Text MAGA to that number just in case I don't show up for about two or three weeks. All right, let's continue. Mm. What? Like a... Real gorilla. Real gorilla. Real gorilla. There's some kings in the building. Gorilla's in here, gorilla in here. Gorilla's in here. Gorilla's in here. Now, with that being said, uh, don't forget to check out Kevin's Corner Store. Uh, you can get that put right there on the t-shirt. I'm voting for Trump 2024. Yeah, we're proud. Mm -hmm. Make every liberal mad. They'll be like, what is that? I mean, well, you know what? That, that disgusts me. You know what? You're a whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I'm here for liberal tears. That's all I'm about. Now, also, if you want to support the channel, you can do that multiple ways. One is the store and two is also my monthly fundraiser. And I think we probably got about 10 days left on it. So if you want to, you know, drop something in there, uh, I definitely will welcome it. So thank you so much. So very, very much for all of your support in every way that you choose to do so. Now, before we get into all lies on Trump, do 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 all lies on Trump, because, you know, it's more and more. I mean, these folks, man, are relentless with the lies, man. They lieologists. It's amazing to me that they think these lies are working. Now, on some people, on some people, they are. But you, I, I can't even imagine a state that you have to be in for these lies to work. See, that's how bad these lies are. I'm thinking, like, what condition? If I was a doctor, you know, if I was a, 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 a doctor who operated on lies, I would be like, I've never seen a condition like this. I can't believe, I, 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 I know that lying can be, you know, detrimental to people's health, but uh, this right here, this person right here, actually believe this level of lies. We need to study this human. I need to see what type of person is able to believe some of these lies that they're dropping out on Trump. And of course, we're going to be talking about the blood bath, of course, but there's other ones too, y'all. But before we do that, I think we need to go ahead and also do an evaluation on what kind of people are willing to vote for creepy, sleepy, sleazy, slimy, sloppy Joe? Look at this dude. Here he is out on the campaign trail, y'all. Making it. take too long to go into detail, but Look at this. guess what? And guess what? Well, guess what? Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. Guess what? Guess, guess what? what? Guess, guess what? what? Guess well, guess what? what? Guess what? Guess what? What's the one way to increase your salary? What? Buy back your stock. It raises the price of the stock. Raise the value hmm. <clears throat> and the shareholders and you do well. But guess what? Guess what? Guess what? <laughs> See, I'm telling you, he can only go so long for the brain. Just say, man, I'm done. I don't care what you hey, look, man. We going to sleep. OK, now you can stay up here with this, uh, this you know, podium all day, but we're going to be taking a nap. So your uh, G's is going to sound like J's. Guess what? So it went from guess what to just what? Guess what? How can we be the leading economy in the world if we don't have the best roads, ports, yeah. and so on? How can we be that? Well, guess what? But guess what? <laughs> <laughs> so wait, it went from guess to just to less. Less what? Less what, y'all? Man, now, once again, who's voting for this guy? I mean, you got to not pay any attention 
to creepy sleepy at all. Your whole motivation must be, I ain't voting for Trump. I don't even have to watch what Biden is doing, what he's saying, because my mind is made up. I don't care if he's out there saying, just what? Less what? What else he saying? But. Well, let's what? Let's what? We made the more sophisticated. We made some more sophisticated. <laughs> he sounds like a fat Albert character. We some was even a fat Albert. How be you been doing? What's wrong with this man? We some more sophisticated. We used to have forty percent of the market, and all of a sudden was, we have nothing. You know that, and so guess what? And so guess what? Well, we can't even make that one out. And so this is what? What? Jeez, this is painful to watch, man. Painful to watch. Thank you. He is blew out mentity. I would question his mentity all day long. Now, so we don't we don't know what that one was. I know it's ended with what. So we assume he was trying to say, guess what? But uh, let's continue. And so guess what? I think they're supposed to be here. Okay. Mark Pocan and Mark, you here? Mm -hmm. well, I guess what? Well, I guess what? <laughs> uh, so I guess what? Uh -huh. Well, guess what? Uh, that mean, I think he's just programmed to say it. Guess what? Guess what? Unbelievable. But see, once again, the right people ain't seeing this, man. We've been seeing this for a long time. We're not fooled by this. See, in fact, I'm just compiling all of this. So when the day come where all the Trump derangement syndrome kind of die down and people kind of hopefully, well, some of the people will reset. That's that moment. Then I'm going to say, I got something for you. I might even put it on VHS. Uh-huh. Be like, all right, I got something for you. I've been saving this for seven years. Click it. This is what you voted for. <laughs> How did you not see it during this time? But let's let's finish because it gets worse. Well, I guess what? Well, I guess what? Well, I guess what? But I guess what? No, at this point, he's asking himself. Like, I, I, I guess what? Yeah, see, guess what? I guess what? How did I get here? I guess what? Unbelievable. Well, but I guess what? We all but come from what? somewhere. But we're all Americans. We can never forget that. Okay. That's the critical element that binds us together. And this year, Ireland and the United States mark a milestone. One hundred years of the Milad. Hundred years of the Milad. Hundred years of the Milad. What, 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 what was that? Hundred years of the Milad. Unbelievable. The people in Ireland. Got to be cracking up, man. <laughs> Got to be cracking up. So let's see if we could uh, go ahead and get our translator in for Joe Biden. Diplomatic relations between our countries. 100 years. First Minister, Deputy First Minister, Michelle Lemon. Where were you, Michelle? Who? <sighs> Where are you, Michelle? I bet you he's scared. Right now, I bet you he's thinking in his head, uh, is she dead? Is, uh, am I talking to ghosts again? I don't know. That man's caught between reality and fiction. So he has to always question everything that comes out of his own mouth. So now he's looking around. For I made it. She's actually here. It's great to have you here. And it's very happy to see Northern Ireland's executive assembly reinstated last Let's see. He get one thing right. And then he goes off. And great to have you here. Ireland. Annunciate your words, man. <laughs> How you going to be? the leader of the free world and can't announce it. Your words. Now Northern Ireland is a fully functioning government again. And I didn't invent your colleague. I didn't. I didn't invent your colleague. Where's my press pass? Where is it? Excuse me, black gay drop at the uh, what did you think the president meant when he said, I didn't invent your colleague? I would love to see black gate drops head pop. I want to see black gate drops head pop. I want to see that head, head pop. Black, black gate drop head to the pop. I want to see that head pop. Trying to answer that question. I thought, wait, now, what, what do you mean you don't remember him saying that? Here, wait a minute, just in case you didn't. <laughs> Hey, uh, I didn't invent your colleague. See, there it is right there. So now, what, what did you think he had meant when he said that? And see what she got to say about that. I mean, it's fascinating that they've made it this long covering up for this dude. But they could only do it based on two things. One is the level of Trump derangement syndrome that they have created. And then two, the level of propaganda covering this uh, by the media. 
That's it. This is the only way you can hide this from anybody. And I'm telling you, if you sit a common sense person down that is a Joe Biden supporter and you just show him these things or her at some point, they got to go, man, I've been duped. There's two things that will snap a common sense person out of this. One, show him how bad off this dude is and the fact that you're supporting him and voting for him. And two, expose how many lies the media has told to cover for him and lying on Trump. If they have any common sense and they sit there and they say, wow, if the media went so far as to tell me a lie about this, how many other lies they've been telling me? These people should feel ashamed. They should feel embarrassed and mad. They should be upset. Like people who get red pill gets mad because they look back and say, I can't believe they fooled me like this. I can't believe they tricked me. Uh-huh. They got me. Mentity. Let's continue, though, because it gets worse. And I'm saving all of these. I'm archiving them for all of the bubble heads. I didn't admit your colleague. What? I didn't admit your colleague. And we're writing that feature now, and we're doing it together. Ireland and America, just we have for generations. Let me end with this. What? As I said on St. Patrick's Day. Okay. St. Patrick's Day? Y'all ready for that? I can't wait to St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he's hilarious to watch. <laughs> oh, man. St. Patrick's Day. Okay, so we got us a new holiday. <clears throat> St. Patrick's Day. Y'all ready for that one? What color did we wear on St. Patrick's Day? That, that I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with that one. As I said on St. Patrick's Day. As I said on St. Patrick's Day. Even in the face of historic economic <laughs> challenges, our economy is providing and proving to be resilient. Okay, now I got a feeling that both of those words were not in the teleprompter on his little cheat sheet. I think he had to choose between two and he picked the wrong one first and then had to come back and try to recorrect it. But maybe it's just me. Maybe that's a one time off. But I highly doubt if both of those words was in that speech. Let's see. We're providing, proving to the naysayers and the doubters that they were wrong and providing that when you're Irish, proving it when you're Irish. He did it again. He did it again, y'all. Why don't they stop putting that word in the teleprompter? <laughs> It's obvious he can't get it right. So he starts off with providing, and then he says, proving our... Providing our... Proving it to everyone. To proving start. to the world. We're providing that we can, and we're proving that we can invest. That's, a, that's fascinating. No, but I'm glad the dude who puts together these montages are, uh, catches this stuff. I mean, this man has repeatedly hacked that word up. Hacked it up. So I would think you should reduce his vocabulary to basic words, see spot run. Timmy loves playing. Things like that. Joe wants food. Me hungry. Me go to sleep. Simple words that he can't mess up. But here he is jacking up providing and uh, what is it? Providing, proving. proving that even with heavy hearts. Again. We're providing and proving that democracy can deliver. Now you need to prove that you can distinguish between those two words, <laughs> that you could read the teleprompter, providing, I mean, proving. Read that word and educate people on what's at stake. The more we're going to see change, but we have to be ready as a government, as a people, okay. to find, to find. Gave up on it all together. To vibe, y'all. To vibe. We got to be prepared to vibe, y'all. Okay. So I just want y'all to understand. That's that's Joe Biden. Mm, all kind of words just made up. So that one goes in the new lexicon of Joe Biden. Divide. We got to be prepared to divide. Yeah. To find. And if Congress presides the funds we need, we'll have. <laughs> <laughs> if Congress presides the funds we need. Boy, I tell you. Mm, mm, mm. Boy, it just gets gooder and gooder. See me hacking up words? That's a church word. Yeah, when you in a, a Pentecostal church, you get somebody get up and give a testament and say, Jesus just keeps getting gooder and gooder. All right, here we go. New stockpiles of tests, masks, pills. My friends on the other side never had any problem for adding $2 trillion in tax cuts. What was that? <laughs> he got close? Hey, my friends never got had any problem with adding... Here we go. Let's see if we can get I never had any problem for adding two trillion. <laughs> <laughs> man, he just runs it all together. I'm telling you right now, man. I know that I would be like, uh, what was that, Cape Fear? 
I would be like Robert De Niro in Cape Fear if I watched this with like some Biden supporters. I would be obnoxiously laughing out loud while they're up there. I don't see what's so funny. I mean, you know what? I mean, you're, you're making fun of him. I mean, the man has a stuttering problem. I can't believe this guy over here. I would be over there and I don't even smoke cigars, but I would go through the whole bit full cigar. Ah! <laughs> Elbowing people, you hear what he said? You hear what he the whole time? They're like, stop it, stop it. I don't think that's funny. You know why? Because I would be not laughing just at him. I would be laughing at all of them too. <laughs> Cracking, wanting to see which one of them are gonna break and confess. How did I get tricked by this guy out here talking about some writing? Million dollars in tax cuts in order to provide provide for to their physical. Prevent? There it is. Make that mess up as you go, Joe. Make it up as you go, Joe. Mm. Security and their defense. And the Fed acknowledges that. Okay. But I'm not waiting. I want to provide an annual tax. You want to provide for everybody, y'all. <laughs> we done got like seven different combinations of one word. So it's provide now? Uh, that way it was vibe one time. I don't and, you know, I can't keep track of Joe, but then all his new words he come up with every day. Tax credit. I want to provide an annual tax credit. I'm also working to bring down the cost of housing. Okay. That's why I'm a prime. That's why I'm a prime. <laughs> Another one. Another word, ice to dust. Uh, do, 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 do. Another word, ice to dust. Uh, and another word's gone, and another word's gone. Another word, ice to dust. Mm, hey, you're gonna get you too. Another word bites the dust. Doom, 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 doom. Another word bites the dust. Come on, y'all. Y'all know the song. Doom, doom, doom. Another word bites the dust. Hey, and another one gone. So now, Joe is <laughs> He's killing these words, man. He got that machete out going to work. That's why I want to prime. Well, I want to provide an annual. Tax credit, two out of three Americans. No word is safe when Joe's on the microphone. Now, let me see. Let me let me go ahead and turn my volume up. Because, see, now we're going to get serious. We're going to get serious here. Let me, let me see something here. Wait, 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 work with me now. Stop Stop all that. Here we go. Now, <laughs> so no word is safe. Threat to democracy. They're the all threat. Right, so now, to let's see. Here we go. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me Tax go back. credit. I'm oh, also working go. to bring down the cost of housing. <laughs> That's why I'm a prime. That's why I'm a prime. That's why I'm a prime. I want to provide an annual tax credit. Two out of three Americans feel like the economy is going the wrong direction. Okay. Uh, that there's reasons that people are upset. Look, Joe Biden has destroyed America's economy from the middle out and from the bottom up. Well, wait, he was just talking about providing or wait, providing. I don't know which one of the ones to pick, but he was trying, I think, to say that he's doing something for the economy. And, and, and now you're still saying it's not working. People still feel negative about Joe. Two out of how many Americans? Well, you know what? Let's let's see. Maybe, maybe the stats get better. Everybody's feeling it. Everything Joe Biden touches turns to shit. Oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> he got that doo doo touch. Yeah. He got that doo 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 touch. That man. Everything he touches turns to doo doo. Dookie. Pure shite. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> shite. Everything? I mean, those are big words. So, Trump, I mean, I'm sure there's another word you could have came up with. I tried. I tried finding a different word, but and? there are some words that cannot be duplicated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That right there, man. I'll make an exception for the body mouth. I, I can't come up with a better word. Now, of course, you know, my, my, my word for him is dumpster juice. And I wish it was something worse than dumpster juice, but it's hard for me to imagine anything nastier than dumpster juice. I mean, I, I will, you know, I will, I will drink a lot of things, but dumpster juice, I'm like, oh, that's where I draw the line. Uh, kid, okay, you're going to you're going to starve and die of thirst if you don't drink this dumpster juice. I can't drink Joe Biden. I'm sorry. I can't. So <laughs> dumpster juice slash short. Right there, <laughs> uh, Trump had to bust that word out for him, and it's 100% accurate. I can't think of one thing this man has done since he's been in office that didn't turn to 100% shite. Dang on it. So let's go ahead and hear what he has to say about Trump and all of us. Mega movement. 
What? Not every Republican, not even a majority of Republicans adhere to the MAGA's extremist ideology. What? Their extreme agenda, if carried out, would fundamentally alter the institutions of American democracy. You could barely get it out. See, that's what happens when it's a combination of you losing your mind and your lying. You can't be losing your mind and lying at the same time. You got it. I'm up here rhyming all over the place. <laughs> I feel like I'm on Sesame Street. Yeah, so he's losing his mind and lying at the same time. So um, there it is. Uh, the American street, the way you, you, the democracy and the white nationalists and uh, ultra MAGA. And I'm sure it's providing Biden and stuff like that. I'm Biden. Okay, we go. We know it. I'm not the threat to democracy. You're I'm not? stopping the threat to democracy. They're the threat to democracy. Well, darn Putin, which leads us in to some of the things we're going to be talking about tonight. Because I agree with Trump. You know, uh, I've been hearing rumors out there, y'all. Rumors, man. Look at all these rumors. They're out there talking about Trump's a threat to democracy. That's all I hear. Democracy. De 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 democracy. Now, we all know they're the masters of projection, gaslighting, deception, redirection, all of that. They are the masters of it. Uh, what else? Uh, propaganda. The, the left is the masters of it. Uh, and I'm not talking about just the fake news. Uh, in coordination with the Democrats and, of course, the deep state. And they just come out and they just uh, blatantly and obviously cover for the Democrats live form. And then, of course, attacked all Republicans, but especially Trump. They got a special, special place for Trump. I mean, when it comes down to him, there is no limit to the lies, man. Their lies have no limits. They don't even care that the lies can be fact-checked. They don't even worry about it. And they don't even worry about how obvious it is that they're trying to destroy the image of Trump, discourage people from voting for Trump, to uh, demonize Trump, and to demonize everybody who supports Trump. And watch, before we get to, of course, the latest hoax, watch just how the media works and how they uh, are not only covering for Biden, but how they're trying to treat Trump differently. But then one of them had the nerve to say something that really made me mad. And I get to him in a minute. So check this out. And not only that, all these local cases like Fanny, Fanny, it's spelled Fanny. It's spelled Fanny like your ass, right? Fanny. <laughs> That's why they hate Trump. That is why they hate Trump. I bet you right there they are. But look at him. He only said that because she got a big old butt. Fanny got a big old butt. I know I told you she'd be true, but Fanny got a big old butt. So, guy with the broken tally whacker, she's leaving you. Oh, uh, yeah. I say Fanny got a big old butt. That dude right now is over there sitting back like, man, my hookup is gone. <laughs> my reputation blew out for this chick. And Trump is calling it out. He's like, yo, man, uh... <laughs> It's straight corruption. I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to save democracy. Hey, y'all sicking people like Fat Fanny out there to bite at my ankles. Y'all got y'all got Queen Latifah slash Big Cankles, you know, uh, looking like Godzilla up there in New York, big as she is. Uh-huh. Running around, I'm surprised we ain't see her standing on top of the dang on Empire State Building, swatting at airplanes. So you got her up there. And then you got crazy Jack in the Box popping up everywhere. And you got Fat Albert running around. Hey, hey, hey. All of these nutbags trying to go after Trump constantly. And yet they're talking about Trump's a threat to democracy. So Trump is keeping the real. He's like, no, 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 no. Y'all got Fat Fanny after me. What, what else about Fanny? And see, he got the sense of humor too. So I know she's watching this like, oh, I'm going to get him. But when she became DA, she decided to add a little French, a little fancy, Farney. Farney. Farney and, you know, Farney. It's like Jesse Smoulet. Mm -hmm. And Mr. and Mrs. Wade, <laughs> which his wife did not appreciate. Oh, I'm sure she did. His wife didn't appreciate. Can you imagine these two people trying to take down a very popular, I'm a very popular president. I mean, again, I got more votes than any sitting president in history. I, we have these two lowlifes 
trying to take down a president of the United States. But you know, equally badly, they went after 26 people. They wanted to make it 48 people. They had some senators that these guys know very well who were indicted, who were ready to be indicted, and somebody stopped it. And they wanted to find out what the hell is going on in Georgia. Yeah, we all need to find out. What kind of corruption is coming up out of that joint? I smell it from here. So he is identifying what we all been seeing. And they wonder why it ain't working. And I'm loving the fact that it's backfired on a lot of these prosecutors to show just how low life they are. Because you got to be at the bottom of the barrel for the Democrats to use you. Uh, and you agree to it like this, knowing the risk. This is all or nothing for funny. That's why she ain't walking away from this. She's like, all right, man, look, not only did I get myself caught up in this mess, thinking that they was just going to, you know, help me out and I ride off into the sunset, get a gig on one of these raggedy networks. I never thought that this would backfire on me. Yeah, I might lose the case, but this now has turned around and I'm now the rabbit. I'm the rabbit. Here I was. Burr, burr. Now I'm the rabbit. So. I'm sure she's rethinking her whole life and trying to figure out how she can get out of this. Because if she does not find Trump guilty, uh, <laughs> if she's not able to, you know, do this case before election, her whole career is through. She, she can't even take the risk of turning it over to somebody because essentially what she's doing is admitting guilt and taking herself out of the limelight and really opening herself up for all kind of other issues that's going to come from this. And it all is because she wanted the limelight. She was corrupt enough to go after him. And I'm saying, you little teeny snot, you little low life prosecutor. I mean, you prostitute yourself and you're trying to take down a president that you know, you know, millions of people love this man and want to vote for him. And you dirty enough to try this. That's why I don't feel bad about anything that befalls her or Nathan. Yeah, he's a co-conspirator, too. He was up at that White House talking about, I guarantee, give me the information. We're going we gonna to take this man down. I'm pretty sure. But only he gets fired. Interesting. Hmm. What's going on with the elections that it's so crazy? And they almost got indicted for that. Oh, look at this. Congressman. Look at this. Speaking... This is the person I was talking about, y'all. Yeah, so uh, Funny and uh, Nathan was both at the White House at some point. Uh, and all of these prosecutors, which remember, guys, remember, the media has been out to tell them, no, there's no evidence. There's no evidence that these people coordinated with the White House. The White House denies it. The White House, oh, they, they deny it. Uh, <laughs> OK, and you just, that's it. You stop right there. Oh, uh, no, 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 man, we ain't coordinate with them. Oh, thank heavens. Thank heavens. So here we got a dirt bag walking. Y'all ever see a dirt bag with legs? Y'all ever see a poodle? Yeah, he got more poodle than body. Right now, poodle's walking his owner. So here is Jerry Nadler. No, well, not Jerry Nadler. This is, uh, what's his name? Um, Rad, yeah, Rad, uh, Rat Skin. There we go. So Ratskin is out here walking and somebody comes up to him and asks him a question about uh, something that went on with Fannie Willis and that J6 committee. And why did your J6 committee delete communications with Fannie Willis? Uh, it didn't. And you're a cult member. That's your response. That, that uh, it, it didn't. And uh, you're a cult member for calling out the truth. So the J6 committee. Uh, deleted information, just like the J6 committee lost all kind of stuff. Just like the J6 committee didn't tell the truth about the clavicle girl. Uh-huh, yeah, all coordinated. Yeah, they removed testimonies of people saying that didn't happen. And they think we're stupid. They think we don't notice. They're still running around. Got the nerve to be talking about some dang on uh, the J6 was the greatest attack on the homeland and Trump uh, the, uh, insurrection. Now we find out that Trump actually, we knew it, but actually did offer uh, 10 to 20,000 troops. Uh, they rejected it. See, these are things that if the Republicans knew how to promote, if they knew how to get the word out, these are things that will open up the eyes of people who fell for this that aren't too far gone with the Trump derangement syndrome. Now we got 
We got a part of the population. You can show them that the Democrats hoodwinked them. You can show them that the Democrats deceived them, lied to them, falsified this, deleted that, and they will still say, I don't care. Trump's worse. They did it to stop this dictator. But this guy insults this man by simply saying, you're a cult leader. And this is how they fundamentally fundamentally uh, approach all Trump supporters. See, they don't want to debate us. They don't want to sit back and say, well, uh, let me prove that what you're saying is wrong or whatever. We'll just say you're a cult leader for following Trump. You believe all these conspiracies. Now, that's one way to deter any opposition when you just label them as conspiracy theorists. There it is. So now all of a sudden, the person that has multiple cult followers, <laughs> the party that has a whole heap of cult followers, if you don't believe me, just go online and watch a little bit of footage of these people out here protesting and dropping out every talking point that comes out of the Democrat Party and the fake news. Just check that out and see how these people are responding when people just ask them simple questions. All right, that Trump's guilty for stuff. Like what? You know what? You're a fascist. I don't want to speak to you anymore. These people just regurgitate whatever these people tell them. And yet he's just going to go ahead and say, you're a cult leader. That didn't answer the question. Well, you've got a lot of letters that said you did. Do you want to comment on that? No, you need deprogramming. I read the news. You need deprogramming. Now, that man should be saying that to every person out there suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. Yep, but that's his response. You need deprogramming. Now, I hope this all comes out. I hope when Trump gets in, he, he brings in somebody who unravels all of this and shows that how corrupt the J6 committee was, all of the stuff they deleted. This, I mean, I was listening to, I forget who it was today. It might have been. I know who it was. It was uh, Benny, Benny Johnson, I believe. Wait, Benny. Yeah, ben, I think it's Benny, Benny Johnson. Yeah, I was listening to him. And, you know, he had a, a lawyer on and, and he was talking about all of the corruption that we, we just see. And it's so blatant. And he was like, man, can we can we even deal with this? Like, how how do we even, you know, clear this up? And it got to be an overall. I mean, it just it, Trump got to come in and just say, you know what? If I have legitimate reason to go after these people, uh, then I'm going after. Them. See, we can't come in and say, well, we're, we're just going to go ahead and try to let bygones be bygones and, and not right the ship. We got to come in and say, you know, we have a legitimate. We're going to be like them. See, they go after innocent people to build a narrative. You know, they'll go ahead and destroy a whole person's life just to try to get one person or to stop Trump from, you know, uh, getting back into the White House. They will destroy whoever and whatever is in their path. And they make it up. Whereas if you got the goods on somebody, if it's legit and you really are saying this person has a predicate. We need to go and look into this. You don't have to feel ashamed about that. You don't have to be embarrassed. You don't have to sit back and worry about the reaction of the crazy liberals that's going to be going crazy and the fake news going to be going, see, I told you he was going after his political enemies, but we got the evidence. That's the difference. See, and this is the mentality that Republicans got to get. Because the only reason these Democrats operate like this is because they just assume Republicans if they do get power, it's just going to go ahead and relax. Like right now, we, we've had the House for two years now. And what? Well, I mean, I don't, I'm waiting for the impeachment uh, hearings to start with mucus. When is that even starting? You know, I'm, I'm sitting there saying, boy, it's, it's almost like we didn't do anything with it. Yeah, we whined about stuff. We highlighted stuff. But good grief. How about you go after some folks and reveal this mess? How about you fight back? I mean, Kemp down there in Georgia has every legitimate reason to fire into Fanny, fire into her, phony Fanny. But now he waits all the way until it's obvious that she's corrupt. And now he's going to try to act like, oh, I, uh, uh, look, I, I signed something that, uh, you know, and it ain't even going to impact her right now. It's for the future. But I'm sitting there going, man, y'all, y'all just y'all dropping the ball. So. 
only person right now that I'm saying we can rely on. And I saw an interview with Trump the other day where he was saying the first time they got me, I made a mistake with a lot of people I surrounded myself with because I didn't know. But this time I'm putting the right people in place and I'm like, darn right. And they ain't going to interfere a, a, a position for Kev as the enforcer. Bring me on, man. I will enforce some mess. I'd be like, see, you, you don't want you, you don't want to listen. Shh, 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 calm down now. Calm down. Stop moving. Just go, go with it. Go with it. Okay. They ain't going it. Yeah. These folks need some people to show them you cannot become rogue. You cannot abuse your power. You can't be out there just doing the things that the Democrats and these fake behind prosecutors are doing. They got to have some type of punishment or else what will happen is Trump will do his four years. And when he's out, they'll just go ahead and resurface and run it back. That's all. So we got to clean it up, man. If we don't clean it up in these four years, it ain't going to get done. So it got to get done. And people like Ratskin needs to be exposed. Congressman. But I think the key uh -oh. here is how to. Uh oh. More about Fonnie Willis. Fonnie. Go forward because clearly Wade is off. But I think that this is such a huge body blow, almost a fatal blow to Fonnie Willis. I think the way forward is she has to voluntarily recuse herself. It never happened. I know that she has it in her, but I think she has to say, I'm going to appoint a, ch a chief assistant who's going to oversee this case. She clearly. Nope. It's life or death. It's life or death for Fonnie. She's like, man, if I do that, I ain't going to have nothing on my side protecting me. <laughs> That's the only reason I'm still in the game. Man, me staying on this case is saving my life right about now. She's going to go down with the shit. Clearly has no credibility with this judge. None. And these issues are going to be taken up. And the judge invites these issues to be taken up by all sorts of other Georgia regulators, including the Georgia Assembly, the Fulton County Board of Commissioners, the State Ethics Commission. I mean, he li he lists that. So I think the best thing, if you are, if your first interest mm -hmm. is the sanctity of this case, which I agree with you. And that is not her first interest. It's the sanctity of funny. That's what it is. Right now, she can care less about the case. She's like, the case is saving my life right about now. Now, the judge done went ahead and buckled and gave me a little lifeline. She better hang on to it. So if they are expecting her <laughs> to say, well, you know, the case is more important. They wouldn't have went to Fonnie Willis with this case if they didn't see some corruption and evil in her. They knew she was just evil enough and nasty enough to pick, take this case. So if she walks away from it, it's gone. It's gone. So she's not going to do that. Uh, what she needs to do, though, is lay low. See, but I got a feeling her ego is, is a little too big. She might lay low for a little bit, but we're going to see. We're going to see if she resurfaces and start chirping. Jay, this is the most important case. Um, in Georgia, and of the, the four Trump cases, this may be the most important because it's a it's one that will last regardless of whether Donald Trump wins the presidency or not. If your first interest is this case, I think she needs to remove move herself voluntarily and just say someone else is going to oversee this case in Georgia, so that yeah. whatever happens to her in terms of ethics, it doesn't taint this case. Jeff, I'm this case is already tainted. They ain't going it. It's over. For this case, as far as people respecting it, and what well, we never did. We all knew it was fake. But it's bad when even, you know, people in the middle and some of the people in the fake news is like, oh, man, it, this looks real bad. It, it got to get real bad for them to do that. But some people just won't let it go. Some people are saying, you know what, I'm riding and dying with phony fanny. I mean, the the judge's opinion was a scathing rebuke of, of Willis, uh, her judgment. He wrote that the reasonable questions remain about whether Willis and Wade testified untruthfully about the timing of their relationship. I mean, that's... Today was a very good day for Donald Trump. Um, this case is going nowhere. Oh. Even if, in the extremely unlikely event that this somehow staggers to trial yeah. in August or in the fall, think about this. There's another racketeering case in Georgia where jury selection, not the trial, no. jury selection what? has taken a year. This case is never going to trial uh, before uh, the election. Well, then that means phony Fanny is irrelevant now. See, if she can't bring forth the case before Trump gets in, 
or the election takes place, then she's irrelevant. So it's Jack Smith. And the other two cases means nothing. Well, it means something, but, you know, so I'm sure she's like, oh, shoot, we got to do something, but I don't know what to do now. See, uh, I was so corrupt and I got so arrogant and inside myself that I thought that I can do whatever I want and it'll never catch up with me. There's always going to be somebody watching people like this who get the big head, think they got the juice and say, you know what? I don't like that. And I would be willing to tell. I would be willing to go ahead and go on record. I would be willing and whatever. So I'm sure this is going to bring out a whole bunch of enemies and a whole bunch of people that's going to become a pain in her butt. And I hope it opens up about a million investigations, a million of them on her. I don't want her to have time to breathe one after another every day. What? I'm back in court again. Oh God, let me get my backwards dress on and get on out there and yeah, show my attitude and stuff and talk about that black man can't do nothing for me. Um, you know, it's an embarrassment, all of this. Oh, I mean, Funny Willis has hung on, but Pie this case is going nowhere very quickly. Well, <laughs> oh boy. So they didn't went ahead and tried to uh, drag Fanny in. They didn't brought in all the assassins. And it looks like the assassins are falling off one by one. Um, and then some of these people just, they, they just can't, they can't stop lying. And uh, I found somebody who, after all of this evidence, is still trying to ride and die with Fanny. Check this out, y'all. They tried to steal an election. Right. Who? The former... The Democrats? This woman, this one right here, looking like dang on Magic Johnson's son. This woman right here, okay? Got the nerve to come out talking about they tried. Now, everything she's about to say <laughs> is really the Democrats. It's the Democrats. The president of the United States of America and his little friends, as my right. mother would say, tried to steal an election. And your posse did. And I wonder, since she worked in the White House, if she really believes that Joe won. I wonder if they let her in on it. Or is she just one of them dummies that's like, yeah, they probably cheated, but I'm just going to go along with it and say, OK, as long as I don't know all the details, I'm going to say, well, I, I, we won legitimately. But deep down in her heart, either she knows that they cheated or she suspects they cheated. You know, and here she is up here lying, talking about they tried to steal an election. I'm like, how? And the D.A., Fonnie Willis. Make it up. Come is on. Seeking to hold them accountable. Right. Oh, <laughs> boy. I'm telling you, man, some people just get too hot to touch, man. Funny right now is too hot to touch. But you're going to go ahead and risk your hand getting burned up by trying to hang on to Fonny. You see this chick trying to hold as the smoke of phony Fonny is coming out of her hand right now. But she ain't going to let it go. She ain't going to let it go. So you can tell she's fishing for things to say to support Fonny Willis. Because she sought that accountability, they, the former president they, and his little friends, the allies, uh -huh, um, make it Ashley up, Merchant, on. the attorney for one of those individuals, yeah, yeah. they then tried to distract us with salacious right, right. gossip. Right. It's only gossip if it ain't true. <laughs> tried to just they, they, then they they out uh, that they tried to um distract us with fallacious gossip that turned out to be true. Now you know. Your hands are burning right now. She should be tossing phony, phony back and forth. But here she is trying to hang on. And now she's going to go ahead and burn all the way up. Because that is what this is. That's because there, is. if there were facts, we would have found them. And it, it <laughs> works so much so that very well-meaning people who are just, who know a lot, who lots of right. very She's smart. struggling. She is struggling. Why can't you get it out? Why can't you get it out, Magic Johnson's son? The lawyers um, in this country are walking around and sitting up on television being like, well, I don't know if Bonnie Willis can stay on this case. And I wonder why. But see, you're going to go ahead and play the role of a dummy. That's what you're going to do. So as all of these lawyers, she ain't talking about right-leaning lawyers. She's talking about folks that, like on her side, that is actually getting up there saying, man, she should walk away from this case. So here she is. And I guess her raggedy opinion and assessment of this, which she knows that Fonny uh, just got busted. But here she is, you know, talking about 
I can't believe these people fell for uh, this distraction. And there's lawyers out there saying that uh, she should recuse herself. Why? Why would they say that? Well, they'll say that because she's busted. I mean, there's that point where you get busted beyond, you know, somebody trying to defend you. I mean, when, when, when Jeffrey Dahmer admitted that killing and eating folks, you think his parents going to come in talking about some, my baby didn't do it. I know my baby. He's still on. He's still on uh, Similac. He don't be eating no human flesh. He eats his, his sucks Similac out the bottle. No, that's that moment where you go, oh, man. I, I, dang, it's, this hurts, but Jeff, you my son, but you can't be eating, folks. I mean, <laughs> well, you can't defend that. So funny is busted, but here this chick is talking about some. I uh, think that lawyers are saying she should recuse himself. This right. was a distraction. Right. Okay. They can make In it up. They didn't have anything about Fonnie Willis. So, and I make it up. <laughs> they didn't have. So basically, <laughs> she's more mad that Fonnie got caught and exposed. So she don't want justice for Fonnie. She's mad that she got caught. Like, leave her alone. If y'all wouldn't have went snooping, well, guess what? If Fonnie wouldn't have took the case trying to destroy a president and interfere with an upcoming election, the spotlight wouldn't have been on her. Okay? So she wanted to go ahead and play in the arena with the big dogs, thinking that ain't nobody going to look into you. And now all of a sudden you expose and she's mad that somebody exposed her. I guess she wanted the Trump uh, you know, lawyers to just sit back and, well, let's just see how this all plays out. Uh, it's obvious this woman has good intentions and she's not corrupt. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's doing this because she wants to see justice. They all knew this woman is dirty and corrupt to even bring these charges. So, of course, you're going to look into this stuff. I'm so animated about this. I'm sorry. I'm very animated about this because this is all have a duty, I think, to remind people about what this is really about. And, and frankly, about? if if Fonnie Willis was a man named Frank, oh I don't believe that. I don't believe you brought me this far to leave me. That's what Fonnie is singing to her. Uh huh. <laughs> so here she is. If uh, his name was Frank, when in doubt. When you can't defend none of this, then bring out a little sexism. She's going into that witch's satchel, sprinkle a little sexism, and then, of course, bring out the big guns. They would have been able to distract us with the the salacious gossip about, Felicia. oh, well, Frank hired Susie so that she, Frank could financially benefit from right. Salacious gossip that was true. <laughs> if Frank hired Susie and paid Susie almost a million dollars uh, and lied about the relationship with Susie, Frank would be in trouble too. And I can't believe Q-Ball is up here trying to defend this mess and trying to blame it on sexism. Susie being on the case. So it is so happy. a little sexist. So happy. It's a little racist. Oh, there it is. A little bit of sexism. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me get the real one. Let's see. Go in there. All right. I got sexism on there, right? Okay. Hold on for a second. Yeah. A little racism all over it. <laughs> That'll clear it up. That'll clear it up. That'll distract everybody. Well, not me. You think I'm going to fall for that mess? <laughs> Talking about some, some little sexist and a little racist. Oh, well, wait, wait. We, we got another one. We got another one, y'all. See, they doing their best to cover for this chick. Well, this morning, it, here's my, you, you are focusing, can I, can I just say, you are focusing us on what really matters here, right? I think about that moment when Fonnie will... Matters to who? Matter, you're focusing us on what really matters here. Uh, I'm thinking about that moment of Fonnie Willis did what? Willis said, I'm not the one who's on trial here, Kitty. So what right. does it mean? When you so what that, that right there is you're saying it matters to who? Because see, to us, <laughs> we're sitting back going, it matters that this chick is corrupt and trying to interfere with an upcoming election. It's funny how they just write off all of the millions and millions of people who see how corrupt this woman is see how corrupt and fake they are, and want to vote for Trump. And to them, this is what matters. Stop Trump. Who cares what all of these people feel, what they want, who they're going to vote for? Who cares? Yeah, see, what matters is Fonnie Willis needs to bring justice to Trump. You zoom out, Katie, for accountability for Donald Trump. Who accountability. Is who is accountability. You don't, you don't have segments like this about Joe? None? 
accountability. The man ain't even went to trial yet, and you're talking about accountability. Accountability usually means you are guilty of something. But, of course, the media already found him guilty because they helped support the narrative. Uh, but now let's listen to Connie Chung come out here and uh, drop her two cents. Is on trial. Well, like you were saying, she tried, as in Fannie Willis tried to redirect the meaning of what is happening here. The role that she's taking is to make sure that accountability is not had for her, but for Donald Trump and his co defendants. <laughs> Boy, they working hard for their money. Mm -mm, mm -mm. She's trying to make sure accountability is not for her, but it's for Donald Trump. In other words, leave me be. Leave me be. Don't look at me. Look at him. Okay? Okay? I'm the corrupt one, but I want you to look at him because I made up the corrupt charges about him, okay? I done made up the corrupt charges about him. Defendants that tried to steal the results and overturn the results of a lawful election in the state of Georgia. Describing the Democrats, 100%. Accountability, though, is defined in so many different ways, right? You can, you can have accountability at the ballot box, but when it comes to justice, I was just talking with one of my producers this morning about the fact that a lot of us are tired and we feel fatigue because the way that Trump has gained the legal system looks mm -hmm. like he's... Y'all ready for this? She basically probably talked to a Trump supporter and said, I'm going to go out there and say everything that they say, everything that they feel. We're so tired of these nonsensical fake attacks, charges, demonization on Trump. We're so tired of it. One thing after another. And here she is trying to say, we're so tired of it. If anything, they're tired of trying and failing over and over again. But here she is trying to go ahead and channel our frustration. It's never going to see accountability the way that you. We feel the same way about crooked Hillary, about Comey, Obama, eh, uh -huh, about Fauci, about creepy sleepy, about his son. We feel the same way. All you've done is said, let me listen to Trump supporters and their complaints and how they see us, and then I'm going to get out there and say the exact same thing that they're saying, but I'm just going to say that uh, it's applied for Trump. This is unbelievable. You and I would, and Michael and Simone and Anthony would. Like, if any of us were just Joe defendant or Joey, Jolene defendant, <laughs> and, and we went to court, we wouldn't be able to game the system like this. And I think... Game the system? <laughs> She's trying to make our argument... Where we always talking about, man, if they could do this to Trump, they could do this to anybody. Yeah, they got special rules for this man. And she's talking about if you and I went to court, uh, we wouldn't be able to gain this. I'm like, are you kidding me? When you can drag a former president into four <laughs> courtrooms for some stupid mess, when you can go ahead and raid his crib for some stupid mess, uh, impeach him twice, and you talking about if it was you and I, Trump gets special treatment. And it ain't a good special treatment. What are you talking about? She is basically overlooking Democrat privilege and trying to <laughs> apply it to Trump. Joe Biden walks. Hillary walks. I mean, everybody walks on their side. And here she's talking about some basically, I mean, uh, he gets special privileges. Like what? Like uh, being forced to have to pay, what, $455 million before he can appeal? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. That's special privilege, right? That's special privilege. He get all that special privilege. Having to pay $85 million to a crazy chick because and they done made special rules so that she could come back and, and sue him like 40 years later. Yeah, yeah, it's special privilege, y'all. That is why I've talked about the Trump effect. It's not just a double standard. It's, it's an not. effect on the system. On the system. It's yeah. people saying, kind of like Michael... Just yeah, it's an effect on the system. It's a shock to the corrupt system. That's the Trump effect. You guys are the result of the Trump effect. Your outrage, your efforts to stop him, your reactions, your attacks, your lies, your falsification of all of this stuff, your deception, your propaganda is a result of Trump. Y'all are suffering from the Trump effect. But here she's talking about it's the Trump effect just said too, right? This is such a big case. Why would you want to kind of, you know, have a pile on of inappropriate scrutiny or bad scrutiny on such a big case? Shouldn't you really be minding your P's and Q's so much more? Well, yeah, you should because of what at stake. But why are we always treating him so much differently than we do any other criminal defendant? And That's what we're wondering. <laughs> Man, you should be on the MAGA side because you're saying the same thing we've been saying. Why are y'all treating Trump differently than all the other presidents. <laughs> Man, I'm 
tell you, man, the only way they can get away with this <laughs> is the bubble heads. She basically just straight took every <laughs> emotion, thought, you know, statement from the, the right and just said, I'm just going to go ahead and say it all applies to Trump. Yeah, how, how he keeps getting away with all of this stuff. He's beating the system. And that is a problem. And what he's done effectively is Letitia James with Alvin Bragg, all them, with all you know, now Fonnie Willis. Trump redirects the focus from him and his criminal action to things like... <laughs> Man, I wonder if they know how funny they sound. How how obviously corrupt and stupid they sound. She's sitting on there with a whole bunch of people who they all got together. All right, all right. Uh, everybody got their lines? All right, uh, we're about to be live in about uh, five minutes. Rehearse your lines. All right, uh, we got a director on the set. All right, everybody hates Trump. Okay, on, on, right, and action. Nobody is pushing back. They all sitting there on the set. Like, it's my turn. I'm waiting for me to come in and read my lines. So here she is talking about uh, it's like a black woman with cash boxes. Right. There it is, right. a black woman with cash box. So it's Trump who's attacking Alvin Bragg and Fat Fanny and, and bringing up stuff that she brought up. Like, uh, look, it's a black thing. And I always keep six months of cash. Well, you said it. You said it, Fanny. OK. So now all of a sudden, Trump is, you know, he's bringing up stuff like this and he's just messing with the minds of all these people because we can't see how corrupt these people are. That's what it is. Right. right. That's what he does. He, he, he does that effectively. And I think that what's always been an us. No, no, Connie Chung, you guys do that. You guys do that very effectively. Y'all highlight how corrupt these people are when you come out and defend their corruption. We already know what team you're on. We know you're not real journalists. When you sit back and overlook the fact that Fannie got busted lying multiple times, all of this stuff, when y'all overlook that, we already know. That makes us hunker down even more. We sit back and say, boy, we were right about the fake news. We were right about the Mockingbird media. And y'all think we don't see it. That's why y'all won't unleash me on this show. A lighter tail up. An underestimation of him is that skill. That's a really good skill set when you're a criminal defendant, by the way. Of course, I heard. Oh, well, we might want to compare how y'all cover Joe Biden and, and all of his corruption and stuff like that versus Trump, because she said Trump gets special treatment, y'all. This report and the way he wrote it caused this significant political headache for Biden when her described the president as a, quote, elderly man with a poor memory. We all remember that. that. Does a transcript shed any light on that aspect of things? Yeah, so, look, many of the details that Biden couldn't recall, such as how boxes were packed up, how they were transported, those are things that would likely be tricky for anyone to remember. But his report. What? <laughs> yeah. I mean, see, look, everybody has a mind lapse once in a while, even though Biden said, I can't remember like 180 times during the deposition. But uh, th these are simple mistakes. Everybody who steals uh, classified documents, uh, you know, in the midst of stealing it over a course of like 40 years, um, it's just easy to forget where you put all the stolen classified documents that you shouldn't have had. It's easy to forget that. But with Trump, no, he did it on purpose, y'all. And he probably was selling the nuclear secrets to the uh, Russians and stuff like that. Unlike Biden, who made about $8 million using his stuff. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and continue because see, we're about to point out some hypocrisy. It sparked outrage and anger with the president and the White House furious <laughs> over her characterization of Biden as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man furious, with a mad. poor memory. The White House has said that was gratuitous and inappropriate <laughs> and overshadowed the fact that unlike Donald Trump, President Biden did not obstruct this investigation oh, and was exonerated. You exonerated? Exonerated? Now, wait a minute. That's a word that, that I didn't hear during the whole report. Hey, now, wait a minute. Y'all making stuff up? exonerated and look at that the news just went with it they went ahead and said it and that the president was exonerated they said it because the democrats said it and therefore and biden said it so therefore they just like you know what there it is they told us what they want us to say exonerated you exonerated a conviction i know that did the not term will i did not exonerate him well why you keep saying it bug eyes that's what i want to know 
But wait a minute. Remember? Remember, y'all, when the, rem the Mueller report came out and Trump said he was exonerated? Let's see how the media reacted to him and see all his special treatment he gets. Does not exonerate, exonerate him. him. He lied today when he said, I've been fully exonerated. He could not be exonerated. He does not exonerate. But he's not exonerated. Not he exonerate. was not exonerated. What president mean? Trump was not exonerated. Why did Trump did not exonerate the president. Mueller what? didn't exonerate Trump. He is not fully exonerated. What? Not what? exonerating President what? Biden did not obstruct this investigation and was exonerated. Well, wait a minute. Why Biden gets the exoneration and Trump don't? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You're not seeing the, the, the difference? See, I, I might have to show some people who are stuck on stupid clips like this, you know, piece it together. Why would they just take Joe's message, the White House message? So simple. Just on they just come out and say he's exonerated. They say, there you go. He's exonerated. Uh, the, the fact that he's exonerated. But when the Mueller report came out and showed no evidence of Trump colluding with the Russians, then all, uh, they made it their mission to come out and say he's not exonerated. Trump came out and said, it exonerates me. And what did they do? No, it's not exonerated. Now, why would they do that? Oh, because they're not the real media. They're owned by the deep state and the Democrats. Look at this. These odds are very scary. I mean, if you're told there's a giant comet heading toward Earth what? and it's got a, only about a 45% chance of oh, hitting God, the planet, 55% uh, chance it misses, too you think, far. well, I guess on balance, that's good. No but governor. See, this is why we don't believe them. When they try to deter us from voting and supporting Trump, they always go too big, too far. Now we're talking about meteors. I mean, what what next? I mean, that right now, Dyer, that's like Joe Biden when he said, you know, climate change is worse than a nuclear war. I mean, you know, how about you pull back a little? Now you're talking about, you know, <laughs> cataclysmic type events taking place and you're trying to compare it to Trump. But it's still a very unacceptable risk of being hit by a giant comet. Very interesting analogy. Um, all right, let's hey, wait a minute, man. Y'all see Kid and Play over there? Y'all see Kid and Play? What the heck is Kid and Play doing on the set of CNN? But anyway, here we go. Let's turn for a second to another headline. Look at the Trump campaign website. Yeah, that lady didn't even question that guy's analogy. In fact, that's a very good, uh, da, 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 you know, analogy. And wait, wait, what's this? Here's another one. Here's another one, y'all. <laughs> but this one right here backfires. Y'all y'all remember? One of the things they're trying to scare us about is Trump loves Putin. And that he said that Putin uh, has permission. He encourages it to attack NATO. Yeah, Trump ain't going to support NATO. He's going to pull us out of NATO and then encourage Putin to go ham on NATO. So CNN brings, uh, I guess, the chair over NATO on uh, whatever his job is. I know he's the top guy, I guess. And she's going to go in and try to see if he can come in and support the narrative. The Trump is bad for NATO. He's going to pull us out and then, of course, encourage Putin to attack NATO. And let's see how it goes. Site, Mr. Secretary General, it says, quote, we have to finish the process that we began under my administration of fundamentally reevaluating NATO's purpose and NATO's mission. Yeah. What a second Trump presidency concern you about the future of U.S. Now Please say yes. <laughs> yep, I brought you on here and everything points to Trump. Booty tang, yeah. yeah. Uh, does a second uh, Trump presidency concern you about this? I just read here what Trump has said and, and I want I want you to come on and say negative things and stuff and say, so we could go ahead and say even the chair of uh, NATO says that he's concerned. Membership in NATO. Well, I believe that the United States will continue to uh, be a staunch NATO ally uh, regardless of uh, the outcome of the U.S. elections because it is in the U.S. interest to have a, a strong Even under NATO President Trump? Because it is. <laughs> you see her? You see her? Even under President Trump? I got to stop you there. Even under President Trump? Boy, I love it when it backfires on their tails. Isn't it crazy how people outside of our country can see how corrupt and fake the news is and see that they're making up stuff and taking Trump out of context? Why is it that this man understands the context in which Trump was talking about NATO? Why is it? But this woman, uh, she I guess she can't understand it and the rest of the Democrats. So he got to help her out and throw one big fat pie right in her face. 
Well, I worked with him for four years, uh, and uh, and and I listened carefully because uh, the main criticism has been uh, about NATO allies spending too little on NATO. That's what I was saying when I listened to Trump. I was thinking the same thing. I said Trump's talking about NATO, and they don't spend any money on this. Well, how did the, how did the media get that he was encouraging Putin? To invade everybody. Uh, and uh, uh, the message has been taken uh, across uh, the alliance in Europe and Canada. So uh, the, the message from the United States that the uh, the United European States. allies have to step up has... Is the message from the United States is the European countries got to step up. So simple. So simple. It's so simple that it went right over the head of all the fake news. Because their interpretation was not Trump trying to get more money out of NATO. It was Trump is a dictator. He loves Putin and he's encouraging Putin to take over the whole globe. Wow. And this man right here is able to see that these are fake narratives coming out of the fake news in America. No credibility. They're just like Fannie Willis. It's been, uh, has been yeah. understood and there are now really like, yeah, in the right cut, direction and that cut. strength and also the transatlantic bond. Uh, look, look at her face. You hear her take the breath. <sighs> My hit piece failed. My drive-by shooting failed. I tried, guys, when I stepped in, even under Trump, even under Trump. This goes to show what they're about. Within the lines. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think that they... Now, wait a minute, Trump. If I'm just sitting in this audience right here listening to you, Talk about China and these cars. That's what I'm thinking about China and the cars, right? That's what I'm thinking about. Uh, let me see if my phonics is correct, my comprehension skill. Let's see if I make sure I understand words and context. They're going to sell those cars into the United States okay, with no tax at the border. No let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal. Those big monster car manufacturing cars. plants that you're building in mexico right now now so far guys we're still on cars right we still he ain't, he ain't switched topics or nothing like that you're still talking about china and the, the building and the cars and stuff okay let's continue and you think you're going to get that you're going to not hire americans and you're going to sell the cars to us now we're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car yeah now the audience cheers that should be the story right there it is President Trump uh, plans to uh, keep uh, China accountable and and make sure that uh, China is uh, that's what the, the media should be talking about. But you know what? No, no, no. Keep going. We don't want to. We don't want to. We don't want to talk about that. that. That ain't juicy enough. That ain't that ain't something we can twist and bend. That's good. That's good for Americans. So we can, we can't highlight that. Let's see if he says something else we can take out of context. That comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those guys if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. But no, wait a minute. If I just happen to turn on the TV, click it right there. And I hear if I get elected. But if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. And I go click it, cut it off. Honey, did you hear that? Trump's talking about if you don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. Or if I turn on the fake news and I see them play that clip, I might just think Trump's talking about violence in America. But wait a minute, guys, because we all smart and we just heard the context. Did he shift? Did he go to another topic? I'm not sure. I'm just making sure my, my English and my grammar and all that stuff. So we still with the subject of cars, right? Let's continue. For the whole, that's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. Oh. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're build How did he get back on cars? So wait, the media is so dumb. They think Trump was talking about cars and out of nowhere, he just jumps in. And if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. You understand that? Now, back to these cars. <sighs> you know, it's going out just like that. Now, this is so blatantly corrupt and evil and deceptive by the media. I mean, they didn't even it was he went right back <laughs> to talking about the cars. So that would mean that he just, just like they said when he was talking about uh, uh, Melania and then he mentioned uh, Mercedes and, and they tried to make it seem like he forgot Mer you know, Melania's name. 
And I'm saying, so Trump's that scattered brain? Here he is talking about Melania and how the people love her. And then they start clapping. And out of nowhere, he's like, hey, there's a Mercedes clap over there. Look at that. Hey, hey, what are you? Just like that. So now they're telling us that Trump simply talking about cars and then stops to let everybody know. By the way, y'all, if I lose this election, it's going to be a bloodbath. You understand that? Y'all know what to do. Y'all know. Y'all hear the dog whistle? Y'all hear the dog whistle? Now let's get back to these cars I was talking about. Building massive factories. A friend of mine, all he does is build car manufacturing mm. plants. He's the biggest in the world. I mean, honestly, I joke about it. He mm. can't walk across the street. In that way, he's like Biden. But for building a plant, he can do the greatest plants in the world, right? That's all he cares about. Wait a minute, Trump. I thought you was just talking about the bloodbaths. Yeah. See? Somebody just popped me up. <laughs> I think my name in the chat. Somebody said Bob Bob. That's right. Now here, man. The stereotypical white nationalist Trump supporter. Now, Trump, listen, man. I came out to hear dog whistles. Okay? I'm sitting up there with my big white hat. Got my big snow white Bible on me. Everything, man. Then Trump gave us the dog whistle. He said, man, listen, uh, we talking about Chinese. And then all of a sudden, don't listen, man. By the way, everybody come here. All right, make sure you turn the cameras off, okay? We don't want the fake news hearing about this massage. Yeah, if I don't win, make sure it be a bloodbath. But make sure it's the blood of the mulattoes and the, the Chinese and the Jebusites and the Hittites and all of them, the Aborigines. We don't want pure white blood spread all over the place, okay? Man, yeah, that funny blood, that blood that's kind of like off-white and ashy, stuff like that. Not pure white like ours. So Trump, we got the message, man. That's right, blood bath. There it is. So blood bath is coming. Yeah, Bob, Bob sitting there, all of these folks out there, and nobody was shocked. So wait, all of them, they start clapping. They were clapping for the bloodbath. That's what it is. None of them stopped to say, wait a minute. Did Trump just tell us to become violent? Why, why didn't the audience react like that? See, I got to make them feel stupid. That's what I got to do. This is how simple this is. Why didn't the audience just go, oh, wait a minute. Did Trump just tell us to go out and just start killing folks? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I love him and all, but I wonder why the people didn't react like that. That's because <laughs> they knew what was being said in the fake behind news. But I said, I'd like to see one of your plants recently. I said, I'd like to see where can we go? Well, we have to travel to Mexico. I said, why Mexico? He said, because that's where the big plants are building. Hmm. China's building really big plants in He's Mexico. He's still talking about cars? And Mexico's building. What about <laughs> here? Well, we're building much smaller plants here. Oh. Can you believe it? Yeah. Uh oh, uh oh, send in the dummies. Uh, uh, send in the dummies. Uh. So now here is the people that are getting pimped out online for Joe Biden and suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. But honestly, I think these people are paid. Here we go. God. Here we go. Look, I'm see. paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing. Donald Trump said the following. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath for this country. I'm sure Merrick Garland will get right on that. So you can't be serious. I mean, do, do you understand if you're that dumb and you actually believe that you have no right? We should be you should be wearing a helmet. When when you click on when I look at your page, you should have a bicycle helmet on talking to us. That's what should happen. I shouldn't even be able to take you serious. I should be pitying you go. Oh, don't laugh at him. He's special. If you actually believe that's what Trump said, see, but you're going to sell yourself out, your intelligence out just to push this fake narrative. So now everybody else who's sitting by going, what were you listening to? Do you really believe that? Are you that dumb or that prostituted out? Oh, Donald Trump is one. now threatening the American people and people who don't like him. And it's a young prostitute. They get them young. The Democrats get them young. They got them a tenderoni. They went out and got them a nice young prostitute. 
Get on out there and spew this garbage. At his rally today, he said that there's he going to be, quote, a bloodbath if he loses in November. No. It's crazy. Take a look at the clip. <laughs> and you're not going to be able to sell those guns. If I get elected. Wait, where's the rest of it? Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. For that's the it? Whole, that's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. Now, once again, guys, if it sounds too over the top, then it probably is over the top. So wait, let me understand this. I wake up and I see the headlines. Trump calls for bloodbath <laughs> in America. And my brain don't have a sensor to say, now that seems a little odd. That doesn't seem like anything a person running for president would get up and say. I think that might incriminate him and make him look like he is evil and promoting violence. I don't think they would have coached him to get up and say something that blatant in that context. Surely there has to be another meaning to this. Surely. But for one to wake up and say, Trump's calling for a bloodbath. You, you're you not going to stop and say, that seems crazy. But these people are pushing it. That guy, he wants you to believe it. So he played that clip out of context. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. A friend of mine. Yeah. A bloodbath, yeah, according yeah. to Donald Trump. Do you folks see what he's doing here? Yeah, he's trying I do. to scare people into supporting him or staying quiet and not making their voices heard. And you mean like ultra MAGA? And you know what? These MAGA Republicans and MAGA MAGA, you know what? The ultra MAGA MAGA MAGA, you know what? Threat to democracy. You know what? Uh, need deprogramming. You mean like that? Yeah, you're in a cult. You mean like that? This pop tart. And to that, I say, screw you, Donald Trump. Oh, you don't get to try to scare guy. the American people into submission so you can achieve your lifelong dream of becoming a dictator. Like, that man this is checked. exactly what authoritarian leaders do. When you look at dictatorships around the world and in history, one of the ways they maintain power is by scaring the people, making sure. You know what? If you don't vote for me, America's going to, you know what? And the meteor is coming. And you know what? They're, they're, they're the ultra man and they're going to take over. And you know what? They're the greatest threat to the homeland. You mean like that? And Trump's Hitler, and he's a dictator, and he's going to set himself up as the president for life. You mean like that, you little Pop-Tart? You little snotty nose whipper? Boy, I like to get my vocal cords on him. Not my hands. I ain't going to physically him. I like to debate that young punk. Sure that they don't speak up against them and their reign. That's what Donald Trump wants to achieve. And that's what he's saying here. We cannot allow this guy back into office in 2024. Our democracy, quite literally, here it is the democracy. To sell those guys. If I get elected, uh -oh. now if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. Let's see, how, let's see how CNN's comprehension skills are, guys. Let's see if CNN could go ahead and figure out the context because I just went through a whole bunch of scenarios and skits to make it you know, seem like you would have to be really mentally challenged to not know what Trump was talking about. And and this is supposed to be a hard hitting, uh, upstanding news organization with intelligent people. So I'm sure they could figure out what Trump said in context. The least of it. Now, Mono, it was unclear exactly what Donald Trump was referring to when he what? made those comments. However, <laughs> the Trump campaign uh, later tried to. <laughs> Why, man? Why? <laughs> what what is going on here? <laughs> da, 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 it was unclear what uh, Donald Trump was referring to when he made those comments. <laughs> so she made, where's her helmet? Somebody go get this lady a helmet. <laughs> the whole cast of CNN these helmets, if they can't figure out <laughs> what Trump was saying. Go get MSNBC and then we're going to find somebody else at the end that really needs that. She needs two. To clarify those remarks telling us Clear. that we need uh, more he was clarity. referring to the auto industry and he was warning of an economic <laughs> bloodbath. But we did see the Biden campaign immediately jump on those remarks. We heard this from one of their uh, spokespeople. Okay. They said, quote, he wants another January 6th. But oh, the American God. people are going to give him a fear. The whippersnapper. The real dictators. He wants another January 6th. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Another electoral defeat this November because they continue to reject his extremism, his affection for violence, and his thirst affection for revenge. Affection for violence and his thirst for revenge. Wow. That's the interpretation that the white... They all need helmets, too. Send everybody in the White House a helmet because <laughs> they, they must have not been able to understand... Trump in context. Uh, well, I think he's talking about violence. That everybody. That's what I heard. Did 
Did y'all hear that too? I, I heard that. Get them all helmets. Revenge. Now, the Trump campaign argued that the Biden campaign statement was being a bit deceptive. And we heard a this bit? from Stephen Chung, one of his... You hear him? No, she, 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 she's uh, not being a bit... Re no, it was 100% deceptive. Top advisors, they told us, quote, Crooked Joe Biden and his campaign are engaging in deceptively out-of-context editing that puts Roman Polanski to shame. So, clearly different takes on those remarks, but as you... Clearly know, different takes on those remarks, but I'm leaning towards... Uh, uh, the, the one, uh, you know, the interpretation of him wanting a bloodbath. Mentioned a very dark speech from the former president here. A now. dark speech. <laughs> I thought it was a. That's why the people clapped. No, Biden had a dark speech the other night up there <laughs> and giving another devil speech. But Trump up here talking about. Yo, we about to get paid again and China ain't going to be ripping us off. And the people cheered. But that's a dark speech. Yeah, he's talking about a bloodbath somehow. I got to go ahead and drop that in there because I can't figure out the context. He is endorsing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Political violence. Says that he was talking. He's endorsing political violence. About an economic bloodbath. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I buy that. I don't know if I buy that. <laughs> he's endorsing political violence and I don't know if I buy that. Your comprehension could go get a helmet for that ball. She already got one. Her head is a helmet. That head right there looked like she got a built-in helmet. She looked like me up there on the scene. So here we go. Look at this. Trump says that <laughs> it will be a bloodbath if he loses election. Look at all these. Bloodbath, 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 bloodbath. Blood, 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 blood. Politico.com reports this. tonight on the, quote, bloodbath at the RNC. Uh-oh. I smell some hypocrisy. You ain't allowed to use bloodbath, but but listen to what the media did. Remember, guys, remember they said Trump couldn't call, uh, you know, COVID the Chinese virus. And then we had a montage of them all saying Chinese virus, Chinese virus, Chinese virus, Chinese virus. And to Trump said Chinese virus, then it became illegal. Then it became illegal to say Chinese virus. Well, this is before Trump said bloodbath. Headlines calling it a quote bloodbath. Yeah, bloodbath. Not only is it going to be a bloodbath, but after they leave New Hampshire, it's a bloodbath on her home turf. I'm That's scared. really tough. Trump has left a lot of corpses in his wake. I mean, we have to count the bodies as part of the quote MAGA drive to take over Maricopa County, and the headline refers to it as an impending bloodbath. Congress Charles Blow has a new piece for the New York Times entitled A Biden Bloodbath. You can bet that they 100% are fearing a slaughter. In fact, the word bloodbath yeah. and massacre come up frequently. The Republican Party will be destroyed. It's going to be a bloodbath. There's going to be a bloodbath one way or the other. Holy bloodbath for Bernie Sanders. It's been a bloodbath. They're <laughs> shaping up to be a bloodbath. Head off. Y'all see Humpty Dumpty with that round head? Bloodbath. Somebody needs to go to all these people that needs helmets and play them all saying bloodbath, bloodbath, bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath. Are you promoting political violence? I can't understand the context in what you're talking about. Yeah. Even though you're talking about politics and, you know, votes and stuff like that and people just losing elections and getting beat. My interpretation is that you're calling for violence in the streets. That's my interpretation. And if that was my interpretation, guess what, y'all? I would need a helmet. I would need a helmet, too. So all these people right here that's using bloodbath, I just have to assume they're promoting political violence. It's a bloodbath in next year's crucial midterm. Off-year elections are often a bloodbath. This week's bloodbath for Democrats, a bloodbath at the ballot box. There could be a Republican bloodbath. They'll talk about a bloodbath. There's a bloodbath. I have to talk about you. And it's going to have to come. Look at that. Man. All of that promotion of political violence. Mm, mm, mm. And then back to the dummies that need helmets. When the former president, who's already incited violence among his followers, says that there's going to be a bloodbath oh. when, after the election, if he does not win, he is telling us what... Somebody go get that woman a helmet. When the former president says there's going to be a bloodbath if he doesn't win. So now, we're supposed to respect your intelligence or... Are we supposed to just go ahead and label you as a corrupt, fake commentator? Because that's what you are. You're not dumb. You're corrupt. You're telling me you're getting on national TV and you're saying that without watching the whole thing in context. Just ran with it. 
You should be mad if somebody brought you on a set and showed you that little snippet and say Trump's talking about violence. And you go, OK, that's what I'm going to go ahead and talk about today. Now I got to question everything. You're not going to stop and say, well, wait, what, what, in what context was he talking about this? Can I get like the full thing? I want to be educated before I get on TV and say something like this. Say something just like what this lady is saying. He is going to do. Let me just disagree a little because I'm having super 2016 deja vu over the bloodbath news cycle. And that's why we don't believe This is what Donald Trump does. We're sitting here talking about a word that he used four days ago. We were all using to talk about what happened at the RNC. It's that. in the headlines about the markets on Wall Street. And now we're not talking about his 100% tariff policy, which is bonkers. We're talking about whether he used the word bloodbath to mean this or that, whether he means violence. So, we all so know Because that's more important. That demonizes Trump. It doesn't demonize Trump when he's talking about tariffs on China, who's been taking advantage of us. That only encourages Americans to say, that's smart. That makes sense. But no, we don't want them talking about that. We want them talking about bloodbath. Now, this lady right here is basically highlighting how stupid this is. Yeah, that's why Trump won in 2016, because we all was hip to what they were doing. And now they're doing it again. They do ignore it. Oh, no. What should I we do? Ignore know. it? <laughs> no, we should put it in its correct context. Well, what should we ignore? It? Much not. And look, I think I think the idea that one comment is going to change the minds of Trump voters. I think we've seen that before. To Sarah's point, we've we know your lies. But your lies don't work. Need to be focused on as well, and, that, and that's what that's what the campaign is going to be, and and continues but, to be about. I'm sorry, I just have to say something. Like Donald Trump is attacking in a broad brush sense, the basic pillars of American democracy, period, full stop. If that's not news to you, it's not about <laughs> tariffs. That's not the reason why <laughs> millions of Americans are supporting Donald Trump. Let's be We're supporting Donald Trump because of you. People just like you who are out there saying stupid stuff like that that we obviously know is lying. And for some reason, y'all think it's working. I mean, this is fascinating to me. What is their goal in doing this? How many people do they think? are going to say, we finally believe y'all now. Finally believe y'all now. All they do is make it more obvious how corrupt and, and just untruthful they are. And then, of course, you bring on the nastiest of them all. There we go. Somebody, she needs two or three helmets. Now, okay, what's your name, peasant? Dana Douglas, something like that. Anyway, I'm here to push lies and propaganda. But before I get my mush mouth ready to lie, I need to wet my whistle with my medicine. Oh, yes. That's good, nasty. That's good, nasty. Now, okay, let's talk about uh, Donald Trump and his bloodlust. What? No, bl bloodbath? Well, wait a minute. Blood diamond? Which one is it? Never mind. Just let's get started with this stuff before I have you flogged. Let's see what Nasty got to say with her little leprechaun thing on her shirt. U.S. intelligence agencies are reportedly preparing to share classified briefings with him. Okay. You're, uh, of course, a former ranking who, member who? of the Intelligence Committee, who, who, Speaker who, of the House. Should Donald Trump receive intelligence briefings? What, wait a minute. Why are you asking that question to Nasty? I mean... Was it Trump that shared his classified documents with his uh, ghostwriter? I'm just wondering. Did, did Hunter Biden get hold to Donald Trump's classified documents? So, But yet you want to know about should Trump? Get, oh, okay. I see what this is. It's a tag team with Nasty. You know, I have 30 years of intelligence experience in, in the and Congress. And you still don't. Uh, this information uh, is very important and it is important for it not to be shared oh. so i would hope they would get some commitment from him as they do from all of us when we get mm -hmm. briefed that they under, they understand uh the importance of this information and that it not be shared the experience has not been positive with him but hopefully those advising him would say grow up live up to your responsibilities you hear that with those surprise eyes go up with your responsibilities. Now that monkey paw's working and it's going every which way. Now it's time for me to get serious. Hmm? I'm going to switch topics now. Shit, is it okay? Okay, you're still filming? Well, stop filming, you peasants. Let me get ready by getting another sip of my medicine. Oh, now I'm ready for nastiness. Now, let's talk about Donald Trump and this bloodstone. 
don't share this with the Russian foreign minister mm -hmm. as he did in the Oval Office like he did in the uh, Oval before. Office. You all hear that lot? Like he did in the Oval Office. Like, what, did he do that? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, you won't question me, will you, you peasant? Now, let's continue. Uh, but we, we have, we just have to win this election because to. he's even predicting a bloodbath. What does that mean? He's going to exact a bloodbath? Yes, what does that mean, Nasty? Hmm? That means he's going to actually go upstairs and remove his items and get into a whole bathtub filled with blood. No, that doesn't mean that. Well, what is the meaning of a bloodbath? No, I'm not going to take your opinion. You're a peasant. Now, let's get back to Donald Trump bathing in blood. Let's continue. There's something wrong here. How um, something very wrong. Respectful I am of the American people and their goodness. But you see that? You see that? <laughs> you see her ball, that monkey ball, man. <laughs> something wrong with that. <laughs> it looked like a chicken drum. <laughs> Oh, man, Nasty is funny. She is funny. <laughs> Something very wrong here. <laughs> I'm surprised she can still make a fist with that old skeleton hand of hers. <laughs> Let's continue here her makeup stuff. <laughs> How much more do they have to see from him to understand that this isn't what our country is about? Praising Hitler. Oh, praising the Russians. Honestly. Look at Dana. Look at Dana. She's sitting there like, <laughs> man, you know, they told her, now listen, when Nasty goes off on a rant, sit there and shut up and listen. Don't you interrupt her one time. Don't push back. <laughs> no matter how crazy she sounds, whatever she says, okay, we're just hoping that she doesn't go too far and people might just believe her. So Dana is just sitting there, numb, taking it all in, not saying, no, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going to have to push back on you, Nasty. Condemning our soldiers for losing or dying in Ula. war or being captured. In mm -hmm. You hear her agree to that? You hear this chick now? She, everybody knows that's a lie. <laughs> We're not uh, condemning our, our soldiers. Wait, did he do that? Okay, well, you know what? Like I said, I make things up as I go. Now, not alone, you imbecile. Mm hmm. You see her? They both need helmets. Let's continue. War. Mm -hmm. He said, what's wrong with Russia? They defeated yeah. Hitler. What about the millions of Americans who risked or gave their lives? What about him saying that soldiers buried in Europe, he didn't want to visit them because... Well, what it uh, says about him is that you're lying. That's what it means. What does it say about you, Nasty? That you're getting up here peddling lies on this network. And what does it say about the network who's sitting there going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we can't air Trump because there's uh, too many lies. See, all lies on Trump. Da -da. Da -da -da. Da -da. All lies on Trump. And it doesn't work anymore. We've heard all these lies before, man. And then y'all come out talking about he's about to take a bath in blood. It's a blood bath. He's out uh, the, the dog whistles and everything. And we're going, hmm. Because they were losers. Mm -hmm. This is there's something wrong here. With you? There's something wrong here. So I just say, with all the respect in the world for voters and their right to make their decision, okay. weigh these equities. How much are you concerned about more women or women having a right to choose? Not or? at all. Not at all. Because <laughs> uh, women ain't lose no rights. That is one. I don't think that ain't even on my list. I'm telling you, I mean, you know how you people put together a top 100? You put together the top 10,000, and that wouldn't make my list. I'd be like, all right, I'm out of stuff, but I'm still not going to put that on the list because <laughs> that's bull crap. I can't even tack it on at 10,001. What's the other one you saying that is important, Nasty? LGBT people. Oh, God, that's even further. That's negative. The LGT, LGT, P, Q, Q, T, double X, Y, Z, negative three, all of that stuff. Where is that on my list? Negative 10,002. Unbelievable. Yes, the American people, the important things like how important is women's. And I'm going, are you kidding? You trying to sell us on this? You want us to walk away from Trump talking about economic, <laughs> you know, uh, 
superiority and all of that stuff. And you're talking about some LGBTQ rights and uh, women's rights being rolled back. In the rights of their lives, that you would vote for him. Okay. You, Look, you would- Dana's like, you're going too far. I got to try to reel you in. Now. Okay, okay, okay. And listen to what she says as she dismounts. You wouldn't even allow him in your house, much less <laughs> in the White House. No, I wouldn't allow you, you crip, in my crib. I'd be like, uh, uh, there's a skeleton outside. Uh, there's a little uh, the skeleton with monkey hands. Yeah, it's a messed up skeleton. The skeleton has a mush mouth and monkey hands. Unbelievable. <laughs> I wouldn't let him in my house. And <laughs> Oh, boy, but I tell you who you would let in your house that got it spent the night with Paul and dropped that hammer, hammer, I say the hammer, hammer. You want me to put the hammer down? You want me to put it down? <laughs> he got up in your crib and nasty Pelosi as you lied about that, didn't you? So anyway, there you have it, man. <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you, I get a kick out of these people. Uh, I tell you, but it's sad at the same time, but they, they're not going to stop. I mean, <laughs> Benny had a good point. He said, this is only something you do when you are desperate. If you felt confident, you ain't got to come out with these drastic, obvious lies and antics. Um, this is that, man, we, we just, we got to come up with all kind of crap. Hopefully, hopefully we could change one or two minds or something, man. Just keep saying it. Just keep making. And then when we get caught, and look stupid because that's what they look like. I'm sitting there going, they all need helmet. That would be my argument if I go on the show. I would say, play that whole clip again for me, please. Okay. What, what did you hear out of that? You, you, you can't understand what he's talking about? Come here. Could you bring the helmets in? I would be like, I would make them wear the helmet. I would be like, now, you tell me again what you think he said. Okay, I got the helmet ready for you. No, no, that's stupid. No, no, it ain't stupid. I, I expect you as a intelligent person to be able to understand what he said in context and if you don't here's your helmet no i'm not gonna wear you know what fine give me the helmet because that's what you should be wearing if you can't understand what trump was talking about so god bless y'all god bless america (laughs) and that's gonna be my new thing uh people who need helmets who can't who can't figure this stuff out they all need bicycle helmets and they're not riding any bikes so thanks for hanging out with me tonight it's good to be back i should be back tomorrow same time same place uh don't forget to hit the like button share my videos follow me on the social media platforms outside of this one uh subscribe to my alternative channel follow me on rumble uh check out the corner store if you want to support my channel you can also do that by uh giving to my fundraiser link that is right below this video and uh, I think that might be it. Oh, yeah, that's it. Oh, the phone number. Uh, don't forget to text uh, MAGA to 330-974-4607 so you can stay in the loop just in case something should happen to me. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to bring back bruh, bruh. Yeah, he ain't been out in a minute. So yeah, y'all y'all tickle me, man. Y'all enjoying my characters. I enjoy him too. So God bless y'all. God bless America. Let's get ready to get out of here. Let me see something. Well, somebody... He's hiding over there. Get scared, get scared, get scared. Come here, get scared. 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 Get